I just listened to an interview on WGBH, a PBS station in Boston. This exemplifies why so many people are running out of patience with the class of people who think they're entitled to rule us. The host questions the station's legal analyst, Northeastern law professor Daniel Medwed. Your tax dollars, hard at work. He's their legal analyst, but he couldn't be bothered to get even the basic facts of the case accurate. I'm talking about things available in court documents, so not in dispute. I'll come back to the fact problem in a moment, but I want to get to the heart of the matter. There are two possibilities regarding the death of O'Keefe. Either Karen Reed really did hit him with her car, as the Norfolk County DA says, or O'Keefe got beat up inside that house. Are there really any other possibilities? Did he wander into the wrong house? Did, a, did spacemen descend for a little roughhousing? Chupacabra? Bigfoot? I mean, either he was hit by a vehicle or he was attacked inside the house. Door number one or door number two? If it's door number two, it had to involve a pretty extensive level of cover-up. At the very least, of course, by the people inside the house who happen to be well-connected cops and their friends and family. But that cover-up can't exist. It can't exist without the help of the investigators. So if it's door number two, if he got beat up in the house and died from his wounds, and officials gave either benign assistance or active help in covering it up. Benign assistance would be something like this. Say you're leaving the local watering hole and you've had a dozen too many to drink. On the way home, you strike a parked car and do a lot of damage. Police arrive. You're walking around stumbling and slurring your words. You drop a name. Or maybe they know you and you don't have to drop a name. Well, the cops, despite seeing you beyond intoxicated, don't even ask if you've been drinking. No breathalyzer, just an accident report. That's what I mean by benign help. They look the other way on purpose. With active help, a cop might actually falsify a report. Or worse, the taillight situation here in this case makes us at least suspect the or worse possibility. What bothers me about this weenie PBS analyst is that he makes no attempt to even discuss this aspect of the case. He treats it as though the only issue is a matter of evidence, as though all the cops on duty and the state police lab and the DA are above question. Well, either door number one is true and O'Keefe was run over, or there's a cover-up. That's the issue. And there's a boatload of circumstantial evidence that suggests a whole lot of very unusual activity on the part of investigators. The analyst doesn't ignore this evidence because he can't read or because he's a coward. He ignores it because he doesn't want us to know about it. They don't want you to know. How will they get their speeding tickets fixed if they don't play ball? How will they get their promotions? How will they be able to run for office? PBS gets funding from shh, us. But if this legal analyst were to tell us the facts, he'd lose the gig. It's tribal, it's political, and it's rigged. I am not suggesting that this legal analyst lay out the defense case. Just lay out the essence of the dispute. Either Reed ran over her boyfriend, or he was beat up inside a house full of cops and there seems to have been a well-organized effort by local and state police to hide that. I'm not talking about making a slanted analysis, but for God's sake, at least describe what's at issue here. The legal analyst says this. Reed went home, then she realized several hours later, hey, I haven't heard from O'Keefe. I haven't heard from my boyfriend. So she went back to the place where she had dropped him off and found him in tremendous distress. Well, no. When Reed went home, she called O'Keefe, I think, 49 times. She sent numerous texts, some of them angry. Sounds like she was up all night. And we've all seen the video by now of her backing out of her driveway and hitting O'Keefe's car, possibly busting her taillight at that time. I think that was around 5 a.m. She was going out looking for him. Not sure if she got anywhere, probably not, because at 6 a.m., Jennifer McCabe, who hardly knew her, but who had been at the party at the house, came to pick her up, along with another woman, Carrie Roberts, and they went looking for him. And they discovered O'Keefe on the lawn. In distress? Well, his phone showed he had not moved since 1232, so he'd been lying motionless in the snow during a snowstorm. So yeah, distress. The analyst then says this. She had a broken tail light when she came back to pick him up or to find him. Well, uh, no, again, 
Her SUV was still at home in the driveway. McCabe drove her to the scene. Look, if you can't get the basic facts of a case right, why are you being used as a legal expert? I think what we have to understand is that this analyst is not simply lazy. He knows what's expected of him. His job is to muddy the waters, make everyone so confused about the basic facts that everyone will gravitate into one camp or the other. Either you're in the camp of believing everything our tribal leaders tell us, or you're in the camp of believing none of it. And that works for them. Because one thing they never want on any issue, never, is people actually looking at the facts, the evidence. The people that never trust anyone in authority or in the regular media, they don't worry about them. Those people don't matter. They're not connected. They're not on the team. For everyone else, they want you to just trust them. Trust your betters. Jake Tapper, Joey Bayard, the Boston Globe. They wouldn't lie to you, would they? The PBS expert does admit that the defense theorizes that O'Keefe was beat up inside the house and died from his injuries. Then the expert proceeds to try to subtly cast doubt on it. He says this, if the prosecution determines that the defense theory is quite credible and quite meaningful, they could drop the charges against Reed and investigate the case further, potentially looking into the involvement of some of the party goes. But the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office seems pretty skeptical. Let me translate. Nothing to see. Move along. We got this. If there's something to the defense theory, we'll let you know. Trust us. Just trust us. And that's how it works. All the people connected to the power structure in the state, through friends, relatives, political contacts, they just shrug. Too many confusing facts to sort through. All very confusing. So let's just let Channel 5 and the Boston Globe do my thinking for me. They're good people. They care about the planet and social justice. It's not my worry. Well, Karen Reed probably felt the same way a couple of years ago. 